So today we're going to talk about something related to relationships in some ways, but um, one of my, it seems like one of my most popular titles consistently is on boundaries, which I'm not going to go into extensively here, but boundaries. People want to know about healthy boundaries, healthy relationships, and topics, topics along those lines. And that's because what has been taught doesn't work. What people try to teach about relations doesn't work. What they try to teach about boundaries doesn't work. There's reasons why it doesn't work. Most of the time it's because they, they leave God out of the equation. They, they, they leave healthy self out of the equation. Usually they're just telling you how to navigate interactions with others, how to get others that you want to do things, you know, certain ways, the things, the way you want things done. It's not really about getting people to do what you want or the way you want. That's a nice thing that we do for each other where we can connect and, you know, meet each other, you know, somewhere along the way in our relations and communicate the way we can each appreciate each other and so on. That's all helpful, but that's external compared to our inner work, spiritual connection with spirit, you know, our spiritual work and our work with our healthy selves, nurturing a healthier self. That's where it comes from. So boundaries are greatly made up, you know, from our relationship, our spiritual growth and our own relationship with ourselves. In another way, another way to say it is relationships with others is determined greatly by our spiritual healthiness and our psychological healthiness. Ours, not theirs, ours. That helps us to recognize healthy others when they're in our space, you know, instead of being kind of a, compelled to be attracted to others that aren't so healthy. So that's kind of where we're going to go today. But specifically, one of the things related to boundaries is this concept of saying no. So today we're going to talk about how to say no. The peculiar piece to that, though, is a person can never actually learn how to say no if they don't understand that yes is just as important. It really is. And you really can't learn how to say yes until you know how to say no. This is something I've taught for years and years and years. It's one of the primary, um, you know, relationships are a big part of what I teach, but I teach hundreds of topics. But in relationships, boundaries is one of the most common topics. And when it comes to boundaries, one of the tools on the tool belt of boundaries has to be how to say no. And again, people, you know, that are wounded, that ha don't have a healthy spiritual life and a healthy psychological life, they're going to have a harder time not only n saying no, but they're going to have a hard time knowing how to say no, when to say no, and so on and so on. And that's because if you don't have a healthy sense of self, you won't know when it's right to say no to something or yes to something. Because as I said, saying yes is just as important. But saying yes only comes after we have checked inside. So does saying no. They, they, they only come after checking in to see if something's right for us. But if I have a wounded history, a, a, a propensity to make unhealthy choices in partnerships, for example, if I have stuff that kind of haunts me and, and unhealthy patterns in my way of living, then I'm going to need to learn to err towards no. Why? Why, don't err, why not err towards yes? Because yes is what's gotten me into so much trouble. So I, I know it may sound strange, and I don't mean for it to sound negative, but we actually have to err towards saying no before we can know how to righteously say yes. So breathe that in for just a second, because I don't think most people understand that. Now, just because I'm saying, learn to say no, does not mean what's very common in the world of counseling and psychology. You know, counselors, your, 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 even your um, mentors, your life coaches, um, your sponsors, different forms of counselors and support groups, support systems and support people, they're often going to say, you know what you need? You have to learn to say no. You know, no to this and that because you, you no to addictions, no to people. They're, they're not really correct, mainly not because saying no is right or wrong or yet saying yes is right or wrong. It's that they're not teaching when to say yes or no. They're just telling you to start saying no more often. We don't want a compulsion of no. We want a guidance, an inspiration of yes and no. And when I'm not sure if it's yes or no, I will lean towards no. I being any of us that is struggling with uh, creating a healthier life. 
So it gets really interesting because, you know, people just don't quite get, you know, um, when is it okay? When, when is it okay? Michael, I, I've been struggling for opening up a new relationship. When is it okay? When you can be fairly certain you're entering a space of healthiness. Whether it's you're dealing with addiction or codependence or wounded relations or wounded history as a child, it's kind of like you have to create a safe space. Imagine that we are the parents to ourselves. If we're the parents to ourselves, then we have to sort of protect the child within. The child within isn't necessarily uh, like a fragile thing that you might assume. The, frag the, the uh, child within, I'm saying, is more like my new self. Kind of, you know, I'm, I'm trying to come out into a new world, into a new life, and I'm sort of trying to create a safe space for that to happen. If I don't show up as an adult, meaning simply spiritual, psychological maturity, that form of adult, um, adult only in wisdom. If I don't show up with that spiritual and psychological maturity, I'm not creating a safe, healthy space or place for the child that I am. The child that I am is the human part, not the spiritual, the psychological, the human part that's a little more fragile and is trying to navigate a sometimes intense, sometimes even abusive world. So I, I really want to do my best to create a safe place for that child. And I don't, you, you know, I don't quite have it down perfectly when to get, how to get inspiration on exactly yeses and nos in every given moment. Inspiration, that spiritual guidance system in our heart and soul, okay? And I don't know how to get that quite perfected. I'm getting there, but it's not quite perfected. So what I'm going to have to do is lean towards no until I really am clear that yes might be right. That's healthier than lean towards yes until an alarm goes off and I need to say no. Um, and so on that note, you know, I was saying earlier that some counseling profession, some people, professional people, they're going to just simply say you need to say no. And I, I understand that very generally speaking, they're, they're accurate, they're right, because they're, they're trying to get you to protect yourself. But they're not accurately teaching you that saying yes is just as important and they're not teaching you when and how to learn to say yes. They're just saying you better just learn to say no. They want you to toughen up, be strong, say no. Well, that can sometimes that just makes you into a harder person. You know, I've just learned to say no, no to everything, you know. That's not our goal, man. Love is not the, uh, becoming walls, you know, or building walls or barriers. Separation, any form of separation from yourself or from spirit or from each other, anything like that. I'm needing to learn how to be safer and be able to say yes. So the problem is in my life, I've said yes. Even when I didn't want to say yes, I said yes. I said yes to people I shouldn't have dated. I said yes to marriage when I shouldn't have. I said yes to you know, jobs that I shouldn't have or investments I shouldn't have. That's what most people struggle with. So that won't be the same when they don't follow the compulsion, meaning the ego-based, codependent, um, I want approval type of person inside that says, yes, as long as that's what you want, as long as you like me, you know, yes, dad, I'll go out for football, even though I, I should be a florist. You know, I'm going to go out for football because my dad said so. You know, and, and it just goes so badly so often. You know, you got to just to thine own self, be true, recognize what works for you, and then learning to say yes or no based on, not just on what is right for you. It's right, what's right for you spiritually and psychologically. Because sometimes our wounds are what people use as their barometer. My, my, my inner self says I shouldn't do this or I should do this, but they're actually checking in with their wounded inner self. And that one is the one that leads us to compulsions in the first place. You know, those irresistible decisions, those non, I'm not even present kinds of decisions. I'm just going by what I'm thinking I have to do, what others are coaxing me to do. And none of that is, is healthy at all. You know, and um, for me, in, especially I think, you know, in the old days of my teaching, um, I was always trying to tell people, you know, you got to learn to say yes or no based on an inner understanding, an inner guidance system. And, you know, it, it was like um, so new to so many people, they didn't really understand it. But if I, you know, in the old days when I would do sessions, um, if somebody said to me, oh, you know, I have, you know, Michael, I'm going to share with you one of my problems, or sometimes I just pick it up in the reading the intuitive reading part of my sessions, I'll say, you know, one of your challenges is you tend to do this or this. And the person might say, yes, absolutely. So 
In this case, if the person says to me, I have this tendency, I just, I just seem to not be able to say no. My children keep borrowing money from me and now I don't have any left. You need to say no. I didn't say that. You need to know when and how and you know, why to say yes or no. That's the trick. To lear learn to know why and then also when and how. Um, but why? What? Where is this coming from? It's not for my greatest good. That's the why. Not why am I lending my kids money? Well, they're my children. That's compulsion. You're letting genetics or, or guilt or whatever compel you. Wrong. Wrong decision. Instead, checking in and saying, what is the healthiest thing for the most num greatest number of people? And we usually will find, you know, sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no. So I'll say no, even if it means your disapproval, mom. I'll say no, if you, even if it means your disapproval, kids. This is what seems right, you know, so here's where we're going to go with that. And it's, it's um, not always what people want, and it does annoy you know, your mother, your children, you know, when you set boundaries, but that's the way it's got to be. That's actually the healthy way of life. Um, no, it doesn't fit the compulsions of, but I want them to like me. You know, it's, no, it doesn't fit that because that's dysfunctional, codependent, unhealthy, and so on. So for me, it's happened when somebody says, um, I just can't say no to my kids or I can't say no. You know, men keep, you know, when they want to date me, I say, okay, because I feel like my friends tell me I, I, I need somebody in my life or all just ridiculous reasons. So when they do that, my, particularly in the old days, my style has always been, you know, to be a little bit a little bit um, radical in my approach. So if somebody sits in my room and says, you know, in an office and says, well, I always had this or this or this, you know, compulsion. You know, I, I, I sometimes will make jokes or sometimes I'll, I'll test them. You know, I might make a joke and say, you keep giving money to your kids? Write me a check, jokingly, um, to get them to laugh at the, it so that I don't want to shame them. One of them to, to, you know, I'd rather them laugh a little bit at it and see through it and go, God, you're right. You know, might as well write a check for everybody and we laugh, you know. Um, there, was a, um, there was a woman I met once um, overseas and um, she had um, a very wealthy husband and now he was passed on and she was a, a much younger than him, um, this beautiful woman. And, um, you know, she had every amount of money you could imagine. And she was like, you know, oh, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to be helpful and I'm giving, you know, giving, 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 everybody's asking me for money, you know, and she was kind of torn between, I want to be a nice person and help, but also I'm starting to feel used, you know? And um, when her session was done, you know, it was like, we're done with all the, the, whatever it was, the healing work, the body work, whatever I did and the counseling and so on. But um, she just stopped and she was like, this was the most incredible session I've ever had and could ever even imagine. This this changed everything in my being. I mean, my, my mind, I see things clearly and so on. I was really beautiful. And then she said, um, well, you know, so how much do I owe you? And I sort of jokingly, I forget what it was. I think it was something like $100,000. I said, well, it'll be about 100000 because you said it's really a, bi a big deal. It really changed your life. And I kind of smiled and she smiled. Um, she actually left me a check for $100,000, which I then tore up. And told her it was a joke you know uh, she left it though because she was that changed but i was also saying to her do you see how you're still just handing out the money without thinking maybe she did think it through so by tearing it up she could then go wait why why did you do that because i love you god loves you and cares about you and i want to be like that i respect you enough to say no, i'm not going to be another person taking from you now at that point she could have said I got it, lesson learned. Now, you're going to learn to receive. And here's another check for the same amount. Then I might have t uh, accepted it. If it's clean, you see, no stuff attached, it's clean. So in that case, it was you know very cool. And then um, she might've written another check for like a couple hundred dollars or something. But that's kind of, that's how I was. A little bit more somebody saying, oh, I can't say, uh, you know, I date people, I can't say no to them. You know, I'm the type to go, okay, so want to go out tonight? And they'll kind of go, oh, yeah. And I'll go, how is that changing your pattern? Then they laugh and they realize I'm, I'm testing them. I'm joking and testing them. You know, once in a blue moon, you know, um, being that kind of radical about things like that, kind of getting in the trenches and joking with people and, 
joking about writing a check or, or going on a date or whatever. It's so unacceptable by some people's standards, but it always just really, bam, you know, just really got into people's heart and souls instead of staying at such a far distance to try to hope that they get anything learned in any given therapeutic type of session. I was a little bit more, you know, direct, you know, and so forth. Um, in my own sessions, I've changed a lot of things because of, of time availability and, and so forth. I used to be, um, I used to try to give more time to sessions like double and triple hours of sessions for people that wanted a lot more personal work. And uh, I was also teaching um, sacred sexuality in the old days and people would come with a lot more, um, you know, in those days, a lot more wounds around that. And I would say yes, um, for various reasons, helping them out. Yes, I'll talk to you about that. Yes, we'll work on that body work and so forth. I almost do no body work anymore at all. And um, even though it's effective and I really, really loved, you know, for example, um, of all the work I do, sessions, uh, teaching, lectures, su Sunday sermons to some churches would call it sermons and so on. Of all the work I, I've done, I honestly could say that working with sacred sexuality and sexual abuses and wounds too um, might have been my favorite thing to have ever done. I do all kinds of teaching on all topics, but that was maybe, certainly with sessions, it was my favorite topic. Sometimes my favorite teaching that topic, but, um, but particularly in sessions, um, I really loved working with that because it's an area that nobody would want to talk about or navigate. It was an area, whether it was the intimate side of the topic or the wounded side of the topic, I really loved seeing the changes in people were so dramatic from frozen, wounded pain, you know, to opening up and recognizing value. I just, it was so miraculous. Um, and I'm pointing that out for various reasons. Um, but even in those, even in those sessions, sometimes, you know, there would be people that would come to me saying, I've studied with other teachers on this topic. And, um, and, and I would find a way to, you know, talk about it and bring up topics and fish a little to see where they've been, um, what kind of beliefs they have around it. Um, if they're, I'm talking about people that have done work in that area now, not just fresh from the street of, of um, wanting to enter woundedness for the first time topics, but people that have been around and worked with that topic a bit. And they would tell me they study with certain teachers or healers, and I knew what that meant. And I would ask them, does that mean you were intimate with these people, you know? And off, most often, yes. Um, so then I would say, well, then why are you here if it worked? You know, if, it, if that worked, if being intimate just cured you, then why would you be here? Well, because this is still not happening at that. And, you know, and I would explain to them, you see, that didn't work because you still said yes to something that you knew wasn't quite right for you and, and just could see such healing, such powerful healing with, with people. Again, I'm not trying to shame them, but I'm trying to point out, do you see how a pattern of yours just disrupted your life again? Um, and so it was things like that. So once in a while, I would say to these people, now, um, you ready? We're going to do some of the work, you know, same work you did with that person, you know, meaning intimate expression or experience. They would go, okay. And I'd say, no, you're not getting it. The, one of the first rules in any healing of our lives, but definitely intimate work or sacred sexuality, you must learn to say no before you say yes. So then I would say, now, again, you got that? They go, yes. And I would ask again, and sometimes they'd say, okay. And I'd say, you're still not getting it. I'm not c coming on to you. I'm asking you to test you. So I'd ask them again, and you know, usually the second or third time, they would say, got it. No. Now, you think I'm done? No. I would say, why? Why not? Um, well, you told me not to. Wrong reason. So I'd do it again. Would you like to be intimate? You know, and they'd say, um, no. Why? It just doesn't feel right. Okay, why? Because that's a pattern I'm trying to break. Yes, and that's when I would say right on. You see, it's weird because I would be at the edge testing them on a topic that's so controversial, but almost always it was for that particular goal, to teach them to say no. Once in a while, just ride that edge to see how far they're gonna go and you know so forth. I remember one time speaking at a church um, in, uh, um, another state somewhere, uh, but it was a very large church. And um, this girl came up to me, slender young woman um, and um, tight dress and heels, the whole bit. And she said, you know, um, you know, you, I saw that you wrote this book and, you know, and she had long nails and I saw you wrote this book and, you know, 
sacred sexuality and I'd like you to, you know, teach me. And I said, okay, well, meaning what? I kind of know where that's going, but I'm like, and here we're in a church, a, a spiritual center. What would you like to, she goes, well, I, I think you can teach me some things about sexuality. I said, okay, are you saying you want me to be sexual with you? Well, yeah, whatever it's going to take, you know, for me to learn. I said, okay, you know, because this is a large church. They have several offices. We could use one of the offices, <laughs> you know, and I'm keeping a straight face. She says, okay. I said, now, if I'm not mistaken, you have a pattern of being promiscuous. Is that right? Uh-huh. How would being with me change that? How would that help you heal? Oh, okay, you're right. I get it. I'm like, yeah, you think? So it's a really strange way for a person, a healer, therapist, counselor, whatever it is, to sort of confront people by going to that edge with them because any one of them could have thought something else, you know? And I certainly have a couple of, you know, here and there, you know, run the edge of that to see where they're going to go and then say, now, do you understand that that's not right? Do you understand it's not comfortable? Where are you at at this whole time? And really walk the edge with them. But even in counseling, I had a woman say to me uh, that she was like 75 and she said to me once, you know, Michael, um, could I ask you a personal question? I said, sure. She said, well, sometimes I'm, I'm learning now to be more intimate and with myself. And, and sometimes I'm wanting to think about something that kind of, you know, seems arousing. I said, good, you know, that's fine. Again, no shaming people, you know, as, as best we can. Um, and she said, could I, could I, would you mind if I think about you? <laughs> you know, and it's just to an average therapist, counselor, no, it's, man, you're breaching boundaries. That's wrong. And, it, and they have good reasons for that. That's just not my style. And I said, of course, honey, if that's what you feel right doing. And, and it's not something she needed to do forever. She just needed it right then. And I said, okay, I'm not going to shame her. Shaming people isn't going to help them heal. Teaching them boundaries is good. So therapists that say that's absolutely inappropriate. It, it has some merit to it. Depends, in my opinion, it depends on when, where, and how. Because to me, setting the boundary in a yes or as a yes or a no depends on the why. I have to go inside and look instead of it being and always, always say no. To me, it's, are you checking in? So to me, this, this person had very beautiful intentions and total no harm meant and, and was in a very vulnerable place. So I met, it, met her at that place and said, that's fine. You know, thank you for asking me. Um, it's, it's just her mind. It's not like I'm saying I'm going to psychically join you or, you know, do anything kind of like that. It's just like, you know, hey, if whatever, if that's in your mind and in no time at all, that was done and she was happily ever after with someone, you know? So this, you know, it may seem like I'm digressing into these, these experiences or varieties of experience and ex explanations or examples, but it's very important to understand because it's the non-shaming, but it's also just because you say no, doesn't mean you meant harm to somebody. Just because you said yes, doesn't mean you meant harm. Come from the healthiest place you can be with people and take care of yourself all the time as well. Um, this is all about really <clears throat> a, a point of as I grow, I learn I can afford more than I used to. I can afford more, meaning as I grow spiritually, as I grow psychologically and spiritually, I realize um, I, can, I can ask more often for things I'd like in my life and not be all worked up about being rejected. That's an example of, to me, healthy boundaries, yeses and noes. Just go ahead and ask. They can only say yes or no. They can ask you, and you're allowed to say yes or no. And when people push and push to try to get you to change your answer, just recognize you are not in any way harmed by sticking to your guns with your decision. And some of those clients of mine, I would, I would push them a little in a healthy way, I think, but in a healthy way to get them, come on. You told me you want to change this, so now I'm asking you for whatever it is, uh, 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 to say certain things, do certain things, whatever, and you're still doing it. Come on, you can do it. Say no. They say no. Then why are you saying no? Because I want to teach them. You also can just say no to people, but you can also plant seeds to educate them on why. Like instead of to the kids, you've used me for too long. Don't ever ask me for money again. That's maybe a right answer for you, but the way you're saying it is hard and it's a wall. It's reactive. Instead, you would say, you know, um, no, you know, thank you for asking, guys. I really appreciate that you trust me enough to ask. However, I'm going to have to say no this time. And maybe for a while, I'll probably have to say no. 
why? What's going on? Well, I just think it's a really healthy thing. You know, for a while we've we've done that, and I'm I'm sort of running out of money, or I'm not feeling good about it anymore, and um, I'm going to just go ahead with no for a while. If they respect that, God, it's beautiful. You came out and you shared your new identity and healthier boundaries. They, on the other hand, might go, wow, okay, mom, we respect that, which happens one in every so many, you know, but a lot of times people that are used to getting things from you, they're going to get reactive. So before you say yes or no to a person, if it's contrary to what they wanted you to hear, what they wanted to hear from you, boy, you better be, better be ready and roll that around in your mind a little of the options of what you're going to say to get out of that conversation. Because if you're capable of being guilted, you're worse off than when you started. If you used to say yes and now you're saying no, that's not so great if it's something unhealthy. But it's even worse if you now are going to try to say no, and they guilt you into saying yes again. I always said yes, now I'm saying no. Now they're guilting me back into yes. That's worse than when I started. Now I have quad, you know, compounded guilts and shames around it. So be prepared. Kind of think it through like, okay, and they keep pushing me and I'm going to say, wait, you know, it feels like you guys are pushing me like you're not respecting my answer. So I think what I'm going to do is leave or hang up or whatever. That's, sorry, man, extra added boundaries. You know, you've got to, you know, just like a, con a flip side of me doing counseling. If I ever had, it was very rare, if I ever had a client that was like, no, I don't want to talk about this or that or the other, which is good. They're maintaining their boundaries. But when you say, I'm going to come to healing, when you go to healing, you need to try to be open to opening up. You come to me for counseling and say, I don't want to talk about A, B, and C, but that's the topic we're supposed to talk about. I'll just say, I'm going to now, instead of encouraging the one direction, you, you know, coming out, I'm going to say, no, thanks. You know, I'm good. Um, we should cancel the session and here's your refund or whatever. Be done with it. Because now that's me exercising my own boundaries, but it isn't mine in some harsh way. I'm actually doing it out of respect for you. Why would you sit here and want a session, pay for a session if you're not going to open up? So it's, again, it's a way to teach. To me, it's um, plant seeds if you can. Don't just say yes and no. At first, maybe that's all you can do. But as we grow, we can afford a little more. So now I can afford them, you know, pushing a little bit, for, but for me to sort of say no and then explain why. To also then go further and say, and if you keep pushing this, chances are I will never again. You know, so that's kind of what it's like. It's, uh, to me, it's very beautiful. The whole concept can be very beautiful. Does it always go perfectly? No. You know, sometimes they push and then we just get pushed too far and we react. It does happen. You know, you get triggered and all that. But just to be able to do the best we can, you know, learning to say no, it, believe it or not, guys, um, it's an act of self-respect. Learning to say no or yes, for me, to you, is something I'm going to do because I love and respect you as a soul. But I also have to love and respect myself. So how can the most love and respect be brought forward? That's what I'm going to be looking for. And um, whatever the case may be, there's times when I, God, I, I, I work hours and hours and hours doing sessions and workshops. Some Sundays, I mean, I go and I uh, have to start to get everything organized for a Sunday morning, do a Sunday service. Sometimes it's two and three. Some places I've been to have had me do five Sunday services. So I do these one after another, after another, after another. Um, and then somewhere in there, there might be, um, okay, you've got a 10 minute break and somebody wants to do an interview for 10 minutes. Okay, boom, straight to an interview. And then can you now switch gears to an evening lecture? And I mean, it goes hour after hour, but somebody still walks up and says, um, listen, um, can I talk to you? Um, yeah, where were you born? You know, yeah, you know, just curious. And I have work to do. So I don't often have time for small talk, and I don't mean to be rude. I'm just totally busy, 10 times beyond what most people can even imagine to be a busy schedule. It's way beyond that. And some people don't care. Some people care, but they don't think about it enough. And some think about it enough, but they're still wanting to ask something. So I'm, I'm going to do my best because of love and respect. But somewhere it might happen where I say to myself, no, let's go no on that one. Um, listen, you wanted to do um, an extra such and such. You wanted to do a double session, and now it's 10 in the evening, and I've worked since 7 in the morning. Um, 
um, no, but I'm willing to sit and talk to you for a few minutes um, because I want to offer some suggestions for your life, but not going into a, an hour or two hour session, you see? So you've got to do your best to navigate these things. And, and it's, you know, it's, um, some people aren't going to like your answers, that's all. But you, it's just out of love and self-respect. And it's really a cool thing because when I start to say no, if I'm coming from a healthy place or yes, from a healthy place, I start to realize this is not at all coming like from a reactive place. I can check in and go, this is like, this is like developing willpower, sticking to my guns. This is pushing off old abusive patterns of mine where family members used to push me for everything they wanted from me or inappropriate people or first husbands or six wives or whatever it was. I get it. I get it. It's a pattern. And now I'm going to have practice more self-respect and I'm going to develop more willpower. But also, this is also about choosing to live on the right side of life, choosing, choosing to be sane. And it's really, really cool. It's such a beautiful thing. Now, some people watching a program like this, you know, scratch their head. I don't get it. I don't know how I could do that. It won't apply in my life, etc. All the resistance we have to these kinds of concepts, they are also now your addictions. You're also addicted to the people that use you. That's why you can't easily break out of these things. You can say, well, they'll just never, I'll never hear the end of it. Your addiction. Well, they just won't, won't listen to me if I, your addiction. You can blame it on them, but at some point, we have to say, wow, it's possible that I'm enabling some of these behaviors. It's absolutely true. Whether it's, you know, partners, boyfriend, girlfriend, children, it doesn't matter. I'm definitely not the person you're going to be able to get through to when you want to use excuses and say, oh, but, you know, this doesn't count when it comes to family. Yes, it does. It can't count to your children. I mean, come on. Yes, it does. But you would never set boundaries on a dog. They're so innocent and sweet. Yes, you do. Because the boundaries are not just about them. You're going to think that at first. I've got to learn to set better boundaries with people because it's true. People, they take advantage, et cetera, et cetera. Fine. I get it. You're right. Set better boundaries. And that's it's where you start. But then you start to realize when I'm setting better boundaries, for example, if I have low self-esteem and it attracts someone who kind of uses me, and then you learn to say, I learn to say, no, you know, this is a bit too abusive. No, thanks. I said, no. Do you realize you're also setting boundaries on your own low self-worth person that keeps attracting those kinds of people? You learn to say no to you. Hey, you know, I'm watching you. You're saying this to yourself. I'm watching you. I know you told that person you're not interested in dating, but I'm watching you because you're sort of pacing the living room. You're thinking about calling him. Oh, no, I'm not. You say to yourself, you know, yeah, you are. And I'm not going to shame you for it. I'm going to ask why. Why are you thinking about them? Well, you know, I wasn't really, but maybe if I was, it was just because um, I thought maybe just, you know, going out and hanging out wouldn't be a problem. Is that usually what you do when you go out? Well, no, it usually goes a bit further, pretty quickly too, you know? Is that right? Yeah, I, I, I do that, don't I? Yeah. So do you think it's a possibility based on your history that that might be where it goes again? Well, it's a possibility. How will you feel if that happens? Will you feel closer to better living or further? Well, it won't feel very good, no. Uh, but there's no guarantee that that'll happen. But that's your pattern, isn't it? Let's just not shame you, but let's just look at it as... That's a pattern and we don't need to tempt fate. Make a healthier decision. Now, if you make the healthier decision, setting boundaries, saying no to people, your kids know money or your parents know this or that, and, and you're chewing your nails all night, you know, you're not quite there because you're doing it begrudgingly. I don't, I'm not going to call that good or bad. I'm just going to tell you, you might then have to start looking at what is this addiction I have? I am obsessing on saying no to them or saying yes to them, whatever it happens to be. I'm obsessing. I'm not just thinking about it. I'm not even just worried about it. I'm obsessing on it. You got to look at that. So setting boundaries, learning to say no and or yes, um, it's something we all develop over time and get better at it and better at it. But you will fail miserably if you're not willing to look at your investment in these things. Look at, you know, what it brings up. I mean... Um, gosh, you know, I mean, 
I had kids, you know, and when they were young, um, you know, they were acting irresponsibly at times. And, um, and then they would call on me for help and this and that. This is when they're maybe teens or younger even than that, but teens for sure. And they, you know, not acting responsibly. And so whether it's dad, you know, my homework and I don't know how to do homework. And I mean, um, okay, so I set aside time to help them time manage and get some, get some homework done. I would just get with them and like we'd do some crunching on, on studies and then great, they'd catch up at school. It'd be great, but it could and would happen again. So should I say never again, you know, because that's enabling this behavior. You're going to get it done right. As a, as a young um, um, adult parent at the time, it wasn't easy. Um, and for me, especially because I was gone on tour so often, it was very challenging because I need to set a boundary and say, you guys just need to take care of your lives and do your own homework. But I also am gone so often I know that it leaves them in a very precarious place. Plus, I'm gone, and there's a guilt I feel about being gone. So how much, how right is it for me to help them and enable them when, in fact, inside I'm feeling like I owe it to them? So here we sometimes feel this conflict. My parents raised me. Sometimes, yeah, they were quite abusive, but now, gosh, they're they're so much older now, so I owe it to them. You know, um, how much do I, you know, do I give them my life? I gave up my life to take care of my parents, but... It's, and I got fired because I was taking care of them so often and I lost my whole life and they don't even like me. That's what some people tell me. And they're saying, but I owe them. And I'm like, guys, it's not easy to navigate, but you are supposed to be asking, what is the greatest good? And um, sometimes to say, despite the way you treated me, mom, dad, I'm here to be the presence of love. And that's if I can afford to do that, that's the right decision for me. Other times, this is why this is titled Learning to Say No, how, you know, because other times it's right to say, Mom, Dad, remember all that stuff, the abuse of this kind or that kind, the neglect or whatever it happens to be? Remember all those years you were spaced out on drugs or drink and uh, we were left to change our own diapers? Remember that? Well, you know, here's the situation. Um, I would love to help you. And I'll help only to the degree I would help any other human being, not an indebtedness to a parent, because you're not my parents, in this case I'm giving. I would say to them, I, I would look at how I might be able to plant a seed to teach them something and say, for example, and I know this sounds harsh to some of you, instead of helping you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with this, mom, dad, whomever. Those days of abuse were really absurd and they were pretty gross. If you go to your grave with it, you're going to suffer for it in bad ways. Whether you believe in hell, that's not good. Reincarnation, that's not good. Oblivion, whatever you believe in, you it cannot help you to have been abusive and die and go to the other side. I'm going to recommend to you that you rethink what happened and find a way. You don't even have to tell me you're sorry. Find a way in your quiet moments to talk to God and say, help me to clear whatever I was feeling about this. If you can just promise me that you'll do that, I don't have to hear the tape of it or anything. If you just tell me that you're going to get your soul cleared here a bit, I will step up and help you. Without it, I won't. Now, I'm not doing that to punish them, even though it may sound like it. If some people would do it to punish them, what I would be doing is trying to get them to clear their soul. So even when I set a boundary, I'm actually often doing it, most of the time doing it, almost all the time doing it for the person involved. I'm trying to set the boundary for their sake. Now that gets really strange because I'm not asking you guys to be martyrs, but I am saying that I personally, Michael, tend to feel like I can handle a little more stuff than I would tell most people. I can handle a little more abuse than most people. If I were, um, if I have a board of trustees or some of my team members for filming and you know the work that we do here, if they were experiencing some abuse from somebody, um, from a client or from a, you know, a subscriber or a, a viewer, even online comments that people sometimes make, I'll tell them not even, don't even let it get one sentence in. Shut it down. Set a boundary. Say no to it. Done. If that if that person were saying the same things to me, I would sit and say, I'm sorry to hear that, and I would talk to them. It's so it sounds hyp, you know hypocritical because I'm I'm telling people to handle less, take less crap from people than I would do. But I feel pretty congruent with that.
it would feel weirder if it was the opposite. If I were telling people, be patient, and I was less patient than them with people's behaviors. I actually am more because, because I feel like I understand it a bit more. And I would never ask my team or anybody to put up with it if they couldn't, um, you know, or, or to cut it, shut it down if they felt they could handle a little more. I'm not going to tell them what to do, but I will give some general guidelines. And when they involve me, I would say, you know, hey, here's what I suggest or what, whatever. But, um, but myself, and someday, you know, you guys hopefully already see this, that you are able to handle a little more. The way you'll know how to handle more and not have to shut people down by saying no, and you'll gradually be able to say yes a little more often, is the more you get to know yourself, you'll realize you're immune to people's stuff. You really are. You can handle stuff more than you thought. Uh, again, this is tricky because I don't want to subscribe to abuse, allowing people to abuse you. I'm not at all saying that. But I am saying that the more we grow, the more we can tolerate a, a word here and there. The more we can be a little more patient. So that's all true. But don't try to be that until you're actually ready for it. Start by saying no. Start by saying no. Then move to learning to recognize why you're saying no how to say no, when to say no, become more sensitive to when, and then practice that as your first sort of curriculum for boundaries or for learning to say no. Then gradually you realize, I've learned to say no. I know now know how to say no. Now I can say yes. I can say yes to a date because I, I'm, I'm a master at when to say no if I want something to end. <clears throat> Whether it's how far we go in making out or whether it's how often we date. You say, I'll pick you up tomorrow. No, no, I'm going to be busy. Oh, come on. I really like you. Um, no. And then I realize I've said no five times to the same thing in five, you know, in, in, in 30 seconds, let's say. Now I'm also done with the relationship, perhaps, because I realized that in my having to say no so many times within one minute or half a minute or whatever, I realized this isn't even a healthy situation for me. I, I must not call you bad. Don't get into hating people that you say no to. You might even feel compassion because they're, you know, coming from such a wounded or desperate or controlling or whatever, you know, kind of place that they're doing this. Unfortunately for them, not my thing. And that's one of the tactful ways you can learn to say no. You just learn to say, um, no, I'm good. Thank you. No, I'm good. You know, that's me. You know, some of you know that when you've asked me things, you know, I'm, no thanks, I'm good, you know, and um, it, it's sort of a way of instead of acting insulted or threatened in something they ask for, um, you could be a, a vegetarian and somebody says, hey, you know, let's go out to a steakhouse. No thanks, I'm good. You don't have to say, oh, no, that's terrible. I don't eat that and shame them. You know, do you know where that the slaughterhouse was, blah, 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 all these stories. And that's not what they asked you, man. They asked you if you want to go out to eat. Maybe they like you as a person. They just asked you out to eat. They don't need a speech. So you can just say, no, I'm good. And that's tact. When we love people, we practice more tact than we than when we didn't like people. And um, tact is a way of uh, being able to be spiritually mature. And it's another way of setting boundaries. See, if I can be tactful and say no, if I don't think I can be tactful, it means I'm in a desperate place. I can't even be tactful because I'm so triggered. That's not very good. So I'm not going to be coming from the healthiest place. But learning to be tactful gives me kind of permission to say, wow, I, I can breathe a little bit. Let me um, step back a little because they're standing too close. That's a boundary. Let me be tactful and say, no, I'm good. And then they push and push and push. Yeah, there's a, a point where you eventually say, you know, the proverbial, what part of no do you not understand? I don't know that I would word myself that way. But if you did, you're teaching them something. If you're saying it out of hatred, it's neither of you is doing any good. But you practice not hating people. You practice even triggering people, non-boundary people, unhealthy people, to, to, to be able to say, I'm good, and maintain that. And if they push and push to be able to say, no, um, I said no, and I'm not sure why you're not getting it. See, I'm, I'm trying to teach you that I just said no, and you're not getting it. Instead of blaming them, shaming them, I'm going to try to say it in a way, I hope, that it's going to be a sort of an education. You know, so I hope that makes good sense. And when you're, when you're checking in, because you've heard me say, 
you know, you got to kind of check within to see whether something should be yes or no. When you're checking in, <clears throat> you know, you, you may or may not be able to hear some like blatant guidance, you know, spiritual guidance from God saying yes, no, you know, from the heavens. But just make sure something feels like the most good, the most spiritual and psychological mature thing you could do. Is it something that's coming from old wounds? Then it's not, you know, if you're, if you're complying with something that when you're triggered, it's not a good thing. But also, if my wounds are causing me to look like I'm making right decisions, like shutting you down and saying no, but I'm doing it with hating you and shaming you, and I feel superior because my counselor told me I need to say yes or no to all men or women or this or that, it's still not coming from a healthy place. It's better than putting yourself in danger, granted. But our goal is not just to survive, it's to thrive, to be able to be so healthy that people know what you're talking about. They get it. So you learn to say to people and they can feel it from you. Those people that push you a little further, even your own kids, they can sense sometimes that you're weakening and they keep, keep going after it. That's human ego nature. But what we're trying to do is teach people, I'm clear, you know, like, no. And you just come from such an absolute place. There doesn't even have to be any volume to your voice. It's just such a clear, uh, okay, and they just walk away going, you know, you don't, you don't keep pushing with that person. And that's pretty cool. Um, again, cutting back on the, the, the hating, the reacting, the shaming. Uh, and I brought up shaming because shaming is one thing we accidentally do to others and ourselves, sometimes not accidentally. Shaming, though, we do as a way of saying no to people. We do it with shame. No, how dare you? There's no reason to shame people. Try to be as loving as you can and come from a place that's, you know, look, you know, no, this, I'm good. This doesn't work for me. Um, great. Enjoy that movie. You know, you don't have to say, I, I, I would never watch that kind of movie, a, a horror movie or something. Just say, no, I'm good, man. I'm hanging. I'm going to go home and hang out, you know, and just show how good you're doing. Show how well adjusted you feel. No, I'm great, man. I'm going to take a break and get some time tonight and uh, meditate just, or whatever you want to say, you know, maybe meditation would be too far for them to hear, but just coming from like, show them what healthiness looks like, you know, oh, you got to go out. You haven't been out with people for a while. You got to get out there and, and play the field and get a guy or girl in your life. No, I'm good. You know, if they see that weakening, they're going to keep pushing. But instead, when you, when you teach them and say, I actually feel really great. I've never been healthier, you know, never happier. Some of them aren't going to believe you. But you're planting a seed. You're not saying, you know, the truth is, you guys are all pretty much unhealthy and you keep dating and you're all promiscuous and you should knock it off. You don't go that far, but you can plant a seed saying, you know, it's a funny thing. I, I feel great, happier than I've ever been. If they push and push and push, you might have to plant a little more of an idea such as, well, when I think about it, I look at the lives of a lot of people around me, instead of saying you to them, um, a lot of people around me, I, I feel a lot happier than most of them that are dating. See, and now I'm starting to plant seeds a little more, a little more stab, man, a little more, hey, back off. And, and I'm jabbing you with some truth. And um, then they might back off. They might even get ticked off at you. No problem. Because you were just telling the truth, lovingly, tactfully. And that's a way of saying no. I already told you no. And you're pushing me to date somebody you want me to date. No. Push, 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 no. In fact, you got to think about the person you're dating because it doesn't look very good. You know, it's sometimes it goes that far. Um, it's sort of hard to explain these things, but it's only hard for people to hear these things, usually because of the compulsions and addictions they're already, um, you know, involved in. And they don't want to be changing that. They don't want to look at that sort of thing. So um, as I'm going to start winding up, the last few things I'm going to share, um, one of them just... One of them, just a sort of a subtopic that I've already um, covered slightly, but remember, this is also you're learning to say no to yourself. Do not think Michael is doing one of those talks. Hey, there's this viral talk, you know, on, on YouTube that learning to say no, because there's some out there, I'm sure, that people love, that they, they love, their egos love those kinds of videos because it, it's, it sounds like it empowers you, and it does not. All it does is sound empowering because it's, Learn how to say no to abusive people in 10 easy steps. Oh, I need that, you know. Those make it big, those kinds of videos, and that's not going to be me. I'm saying learning to say no, how to say no. And the concept is these various techniques and tools 
boundaries and so on, this explanation, but also getting to the reality that this is also you. At the end of it, the highest level of no is saying no to yourself. That's the highest, not telling others. Others are just sort of a symptom of a problem here inside ourselves. Recognize you're actually saying no to yourself. That's, you know, you're saying no because you have self-esteem. You're saying no because you're developing willpower. You need to learn to say no. That's why you're doing it. Not, I need to say no to you or to others. Like it's a, a wall you're going to carry around with you. No, I need to learn how and why and when I say yes or no. But both are valuable to me. When your counselor says you have to say no, say, actually, if you want to help me, I'd like you to give me some tools on knowing how to better say, whether it's say verbally how to word myself or when and techniques and whatever. Teach me how to say yes and no. Teach me when and why. How to learn to know when it's right to say yes and no. I don't want to just be told how to build walls. I want to be told how to navigate bridges past those walls with with other people. And in so doing, I know that I'm doing that with myself. And again, the, you know, the, the trick, you know, just not, not being hateful. Um, another thing to say no to, gossip. You know, um, I've talked about that here and there, but um, say no to gossip. If people are coming to you and talking to you about other people you don't know, just kind of act disinterested and change the subject or walk away because it's kind of casual talk if they're talking about some other people sometimes. You know, but just kind of change the subject. Or... It's somebody you don't know and they're gossiping. Again, look for bridging. Look for how to help them. Really, your boss is like that? Really? Well, what do you think the best thing you could do would be? Have you tried anything to change that? Turn it into a conversation like counselor without overtly being too obvious, right? Um, turn it into something constructive instead of just, really? Oh, really? I wonder if I know somebody that knows them. You know, I heard that their, their, their wife, you know, or their husband or their partner, you know, has been out and about and doing this and that. Don't add to it, man. Stop. No, how can I help? And then see if it's walk away or if I can add something um, constructive, meaning to help them rethink things. Another idea, though, is with gossip. What if it's about someone you do know, including yourself? So you hear the gossip, you know, okay. One thing I might do is they're talking about somebody I know. Then I might say, okay, um, I might ask the person I know, maybe not tell them I heard gossip, but if I do, whether I do or don't, either way, I would go to the person and say, um, is there, you know, find a way, if there's a way to bring it up, to, to see how I can help them change that thing. You know, whatever it happens to be. If, if people are gossiping about them, oh, they, they don't wear deodorant, they smell, nobody wants to be around them, they smell, you know, um, I might bring it up and say, you know, listen, um, do you trust me as a friend? You know, I'd like to suggest this or that. You consider this. Now, they're either going to say, God, I didn't realize. I'm sorry. Or, you know, feel, that's okay. Then now we bridged and now we're in that kind of like, oh, embarrassment together. And we hug and say, thank you, you know, for telling me. And it's pretty cool. Sometimes they get offended. You just have to be loving and tactful and say, no, that wasn't easy for me to say. So I'd like you to hear me and really know that I was being vulnerable to come out there and say that. Um, I would be careful not to say, and everybody else agrees. It's a very tricky area to navigate, but I would just find a way to put that out there and see if I can help them make a change. If it's someone I know. Um, there's a third category, however. It could be someone I know, including my, it could be myself that people are gossiping about. And um, I would just tell the truth. They're saying, you know, I heard you did this or that. Just tell the truth. No, no, that's, no, that didn't happen. Um, here's kind of what did happen. And sometimes they're going to go, oh, no, I heard. Or they're going to say they heard from somebody else. I'm the type, as many of you know, I'm the type that's going to say, okay, I've heard you go on about this. And I told you, here's the truth. But you or your friend um, that's gossiping um, doesn't want to change their opinion. So... First thing I would ask, I'm asking you, my friend, is um, why do you have friends that would talk about me like that? Let's get to it. Why do you have friends that would talk? Well, you know, because friends are allowed to have their opinion. Yes, 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 that's true. I'm just not interested in hanging around people that hate me or would say such things about me. Gossip is a form of personal uh, assassination, character assassination. It's a form of evil. 
it's 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 a form of hurt and abuse, which means your friend is being hurtful, abusive, and evil. So why would you want to have them as your friend? Well, you know, and they get people get all tripped out about that, and they well, this is taking it too seriously. No, it isn't to me, because I've said to you guys many times: treat yourself with as much love and respect as you would your own child. And if somebody were doing something like that, hurtful to my child, I would go to the extreme of um, calling somebody on it, maybe the other parents, get it to stop. It continues. Then you call the school, get this to stop. It continues. I'm homeschooling. I'm, and I'm done. I'm, I'm not going to fight to make you nicer people. So, and, and remember the step before this that I was saying, it's you learning. This isn't just about you being right and gossip people being wrong. You're actually needing to love and care about yourself enough to say no to the gossipy people. I'm not just telling you how to, you know, slam the door on them, which you need to do. I'm saying also, look at what you're doing for yourself. Um, I'm standing up for myself because I'm a nice person and they're not. That's not quite right. I, that's how you'll feel sometimes, vindicated and all that, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, wow, I am learning to actually speak up. My father used to abuse my brother and I never spoke up about it. Here I am saying, you're done, dude. Don't do that ever again. I think it's great. You know, I understand I'm, I'm being generic because if you're five, you can't get away with saying that to your father, right? But some of you, I'm sure, have tried. Um, but it doesn't go very well. But within reason, to be able to say, no, you know, no way. Um, when I was in um, eighth grade, a, a guy moved in uh, to our area from another state. And, you know, he just didn't fit in. You know, um, he, didn't, he didn't look the look because, you know, everybody looks a certain way. And we have a certain buzz of uh, any region you're from. And someone comes in, they're dressed different. They... They wear almost like suit kinds of shoes because they come from a more conservative area. Suit kind of shoes and, and plaid pants. And, you know, this is middle school, man. It wasn't going to go well. Um, button shirts and, you know, wasn't going to go well. So people um, picked on him a lot. And, you know, and I'm like, oh, God, he's a neighbor. He's a, he just moved in next door or whatever. And I'm like, oh, brother. Um, so rather than have my friends that are now some of the people picking on him, I'm like, okay, if I, I just walk over and stand by him. And there were a couple times we were in the midst of some fights and close to be fights because I chose him as my friend. But I'm like, I'm not standing up just for an underdog like it sounds. I'm standing up for what's right. And it was right that he not be picked on. So it's like, oh, brother, here we go. So I just go over there. All right. You know, it's just almost purposefully acting a little bit more like him, looking a little more like him. Just to say that I is a we now. That guy, he is a we. And so you have more, more bodies to contend with if you're going to try to thump him, you know, and pick on him or whatever. And it was pretty cool. It was rough for months, but it's pretty cool. You know, after a while, it's like, yeah, you know, a lot more acceptance. So all I know is stand up, learn to say yes and no at the right times. Learn why you say yes and no. Have the guts to stay with your answer, but also remember that you're part of the equation. You're doing this not against other people. You're also doing this, and really it's primarily you're doing this for your own sense of worth, your own sense of clarity, your own sense of value, um, honesty, truth. And it's pretty cool, pretty beautiful if you think about it. If ever you're in doubt that standing up for such a thing is, is somehow wrong, just trust me when I say that Jesus himself did it and would do it if he were in the same circumstance. He would never enable rudeness or hurtful behaviors. He would call people on it. He did, which is why they killed him. And he's saying it's not that you're going to be killed for being truthful, honest, clear, loving, but you'll have your version of it with people sometimes bad-mouthing you for standing up for what you believe, but still the right thing to do. So keep in mind all these pointers about, you know, what you're saying no to. And, um, and remember, you're also saying no to your own addictions. When I say you're saying no to some of your own stuff, you are also, that's metaphorical, but it's also literal. You're sometimes learning to say no to your own addictions. Learning to say no, watch yourself and say, no, um, I see what's happening. I'm being compelled to eat again, drink again, sex again, or whatever, and learning to say no to it. Um, it's, it's a feel. This is all a topic that is so vast and so amazing 
It, it, it would be worth hours and hours of people getting together and chatting about it. it it's such a multi-leveled field going forward, backward, up, down, left, right. It's such a multi-leveled field to discuss or navigate. I think it's incredible to be able to bring it to the table and say, um, as a counselor, as a parent, as a partner, as a whatever, you know, um, better boundaries and clarity needs to be there. And I've, like I said, I've taught sacred sexuality and there's schools and people, individuals that practiced and taught sacred sexuality. And I was the guy telling them no, telling them ease up, man. Stop just saying yes without teaching your clients how to say no as well. So I was like that advocate, but I was also not wanting to shame them because they're also teaching people, you know, to, some of them to heal wounds and also how to embrace greater intimacy. Um, and I think that's such a beautiful thing. I don't want to be the culprit who's trying to shut that down and be overly provincial and, and shame people. So there's no Michael is all this or Michael is all that. It, I, it depends on the circumstance. One client could have in those days when I was teaching that could have come to me and said, um, you know, um, I, I have a habit of saying yes. The other one could have come and said, I have a habit of saying no. I wouldn't have said one of them is right, one of them is wrong. I would have said both of them sound like they're compulsions, if that's what it was, of course. Um, and I would have said, why do you say yes? Let's look at this and heal it. Why do you say no? Let's look at it and heal it. And I would get in there and navigate with them to, you know, to, you know just get there and navigate the, the worst of the worst conversations, the horrible past wounds and having to hear some of the most um, just, wow, you know, terrible history for some people that got them to go into compulsive behaviors and patterns of yeses and nos and self-wounding. Uh, man, it was just, you know, horrible uh, um, fields to navigate at times. But to see the levels of healing that would come from it, oh my God, honestly, it's uh, amongst all the different work I've done, that's been probably in some ways the most gratifying. However, knowing that it's also confusing to some people, it's confusing to navigate such strained areas and judged areas that when you bring people to healing, it can be very confusing. Even just bringing up the topic can be very confusing. So seeing that also taught me, I'm going to say no now. I said yes and worked with this and this and this and this. And now I'm going to say no and step back from that. And a lot of people have expressed, you know, why would you do that? Oh my God, it was amazing. Great. I know. I know. And to them, I have to say, shh. You know, don't tempt me, just like a child that you gave money to all the time. I appreciate, I do appreciate the thank yous and the, the praises and the testimonials. I think it's great. And the people that, that um, attend lectures that I've done on it or who buy the books that I've written on it. I think it's great. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I know that they get it. Almost every one of them, they really do get it when they see my teachings on that. But I also still had to say no. Um, and I have talks uh, about that. You can go and watch the talks on those topics and understand it a little more. But I did have to say no, because um, the world is becoming so constricted in so many ways. I sense that's a challenging thing that's coming to the world. Um, teachers, healers, a lot more, a lot more judgment going that direction on spiritual people and all that. So, and I'm not saying run from it, I'm just saying, so you kind of just have to find out what works for you and doesn't, and schedule wise, say no for me, say, having to say no a little more. So I've uh, have, had to reevaluate and tighten things up a little bit, um, schedule and decision wise and um, whatever I do. So even body work, um, almost never do I have a chance to do body work anymore. And the body work I did worked. Um, you know, even when I taught people uh, things to do on themselves, I mean, they could go away going, wow, let alone just working on them. Because uh, I could see the aches and the blocks and whatever in a body go right to them and open them up and they go, oh my God, I can walk, you know. Um, or the spiritual counseling work works on those things in their causation level rather than their symptomatic body level. Um, it's great, but I'm just working more and more at the deepest levels and not being able to and time-wise able to work on the more um, physical level of things that I once was happy to do and grateful to see the effects that it had. That's just um, not where I'm at anymore, okay? So find what works for you and doesn't work for you. Know how to say it properly if possible. If you slip and get a little edgy saying no to people at times, yeah, it's okay. Just recognize it was a little raw for you. And so you, you can apologize if you were a little too raw with somebody, but that doesn't mean you change your mind. I know I was a little edgy, but I still say no and so forth, okay? Thanks, guys, for listening. Peace be with you. Bye-bye.